welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day we break down breaking AI news stories and explain their implications in your life and in business. If you are interested in seeing really interesting AI use cases, make sure to follow me over on x.com, formerly Twitter, as I will be sharing some really cool use cases of AI and I kind of, you know, retweet some of the greatest things I'm seeing in the space every day. So make sure to follow me at Jaden underscore AI. I'll drop a link to that, but also my handle is in the podcast cover. I would love to have you in the community. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Today on the podcast, I want to talk about a company called Datasaur, which essentially lets you build a model automatically from a set of labels. And Datasaur is actually a company that has raised almost $8 million to date. I want to talk about how this impacts the industry and some interesting things about this company for AI specifically. Um, that I think are important to know. So the first thing is to know is that obviously before AI and kind of chat GBT became this big, huge buzzword earlier this year, um, companies like Datasaur were essentially uh, kind of laying the groundwork for machine learning model construction, and they're focusing on tasks um, as fundamental as data labor- labeling. So I think as AI kind of continues to move forward, these capabilities are growing really, really essential today uh, for building these AI models that everyone is using. So I think they did this in a push to essentially make model building accessible to a broader spectrum of businesses, even ones that don't have in-house, you know, data science experts. So Datasaur recently unveiled a new feature that essentially allows for model creation directly from labeled data. So this development essentially opens the door for a less technical demographic, um, which I really think is kind of helping to kind of democratize AI. So alongside this, uh, Datasaur also announced a $4 million seed extension, which um, is wrapping up in December of last year. So Ivan Lee, who is the founder of Datasaur, has noticed that the uptick in interest surrounding AI has proven super beneficial for his company. Obviously, I think any company... Uh, focusing on AI solutions right now is going to be seeing that. Um, and this kind of aligns with their vision. So he was recently speaking to TechCrunch and he said, quote, what Datasaur has always strived to be is the best place to gather the training data that you need to feed into your models, whether they are LLMs, traditional NER models, sentiment analysis, or what have you. We are just the best interface for these non-technical users to come in um, and label that data. So I think while the kind of the proliferation of LLMs is really amplifying a lot of the buzz around AI's business potential, I think that, uh, you know, their their CEO here, Lee, really kind of says that many companies remain in the kind of nascent stages of exploration. And I think that these organizations require tools like Datasaur to build out their models, Um, right? These are these aren't the massive tech giants that are going to be using them, but there's a lot of people at the beginning of their AI journey that um, need these kind of powerful tools, and that's kind of the the, the um, audience that they're serving. So since its inception, Lee's goal has been to essentially democratize AI with a particular focus on natural language processing. So as you can imagine, um, this has you know been really, really good for him as far from a business perspective. Um, and I think that the new feature that they've just launched now really places AI within the grasp of a of a wider range of companies, um, regardless of their level of you know spe- specialized expertise. So, this is a quote that Lee said. He said, "quote This feature is one I'm particularly excited about because it allows teams without data scientists, without engineers, um, to just mark up and label this data however they see fit, and it'll just automatically train a model for them. This is really really incredible, in my opinion." Um, Leave used this feature as a way to kind of venture beyond their initial target audience, um, which essentially at the beginning was just data scientists. So now they're able to kind of expand. He plans to make the product accessible to construction companies, law firms, marketing agencies, and other industries that might actually lack data engineering backgrounds, but they could also benefit um, from building NLP models based on their training data. So 
I think despite his company's success, Lee has managed to keep this, uh, you know, his venture investment to a minimum, right? For for a company that is making such big spaces, he's raised around, um, I think he raised around $4 million in seed funding in 2020. Um, he does this because he operates a really lean company. Um, he employs a largely Indonesian-based engineering team, and he makes or he takes a you know a considered approach to every hire essentially. Um, he said that my philosophy has always been profitability, growth in a scalable manner, never growth at all costs. I think that that's you know something that a lot of investors are looking to, especially in today's kind of tougher uh, venture capital markets. And he said, or essentially they've said that you know the cross cultural, you know remote nature of the workforce today fosters diversity and mutual learning though it doesn't come with it without its own set of challenges so kind of acknowledging the cultural differences between the u.s and indonesia lee said that they've made a really conscious effort to blend the best elements of both um he said that they encourage their indonesian colleagues to speak up and voice their opinions which is a cultural hurdle for many meanwhile lee also emphasized the valuable lessons u.s employees can glean from their asian counterparts um you know he, he says it's one of those things is respecting colleagues and prior prioritizing team unity. So I think the $4 million investment round was led by initialized capital um, with participation from HNVR, Gold House Ventures, and 10110. So in total, like I said, they've raised around 7.9 or around $8 million um, for this startup. I think it's going to be really interesting to follow them in the future and see what kind of implications this has as Companies that are not as technical are soon able to train AI models. I, for one, know of a lot of companies that have really great data sets. They do not have the the resources or the talent to kind of leverage those to build powerful AI tools. But they have, you know, they know what they want and they have a, a really powerful data set. And so I think tools like this um, are going to be really powerful in the hands of those types of people. And I think from this, we're going to see a lot of new and impressive innovation in the future, a lot of really impressive AI models. So this is going to be something that's very, very interesting to watch as we move forward. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate us wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you're looking for a innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure to check out our Discord channel and Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can share software tools and prompts we're using in AI every day. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. 